My name is Keith Warren, and for over 30 years I have hosted outdoor television hunting programs. And during that time I've worked with countless conservation organizations that have worked tirelessly to give back to make sure that we have healthy wildlife populations for future generations. Now the video that you're about to see could be seen controversial by some, and I understand that. But I want you to understand that the money raised from this went 100% directly right back to wildlife conservation. So keep that in mind as you're watching the video. I'm Wayne Bisbee and I'm the founder of the Bisbee's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Fund. One of the unique things about our conservation fund is that we actually work with other uh, conservation entities that are experts in their particular field, whether it be billfish, whether it be land animals or migratory waterfowl, rather than try to recreate the wheel or jump in and, and uh, step into an arena that we would have to educate ourselves in, we actually approach them and create unique projects that need to be done with them. And that's something that uh, it so far has been incredibly successful for us or enabled us to be incredibly successful in what we're doing. The great thing about this green bongo hunt we're doing is that the hunter benefits, gets the thrill of the hunt, the animal is benefited because it gets some medical attention while it's down and some needed veterinary work, and the conservation in general wins because we're raising a lot of money for these animals. My name's Chip Wagner and I'm an avid outdoorsman. I love to build fish, offshore fish, and that's where I met Wayne Bisbee through fishing the Bisbee tournaments down in Cabo San Lucas. I heard about his bongo hunt, the green bongo hunt, and jumped at the opportunity to come do this. What a treat. The great thing about this hunt is we're hunting with darts, tranquilizer darts, so the animal doesn't die. And it's just like hunting out you know, with a rifle, except uh, you, you don't take the animal's life. I'm Dr. Pat O'Neill, a veterinarian from Fredericksburg, Texas. I work in the wildlife business and I'm here at this ranch today to do a green bongo hunt. A green bongo hunt basically is a hunt where the animal is tranquilized rather than shot with a bullet. That way there's no harm to the animal. The animal's recovered and is allowed to go back into the pasture. We do that as part of a herd health program. Um, it's a normal thing we would do on the ranch from time to time on individual animals if we suspected they had a health issue or if we just want to do a physical exam on them. There's minimal risk to the animal from the drugs that we use. Of course, with anesthesia, there's always minimal risk, but we've got that managed where we, we know the expectations of how the animal's gonna behave and how to monitor them while they're down. There's no harm done to the animal. Um, once they've recovered from the anesthesia, we monitor them for a few minutes. If they were in a wild population, where there could be predators or other herd bulls that may hurt, hurt them, we would certainly have to stay with them longer. But on a ranch like this, they do well without monitoring hours after the fact. As far as negative side effects of the animal, they're absolutely minimal. We use an anesthetic that of course has a specific tranquilizer effect and then a specific antidote. And so once we, the antidote has been administered, the animal is essentially normal again. So basically, once the animal's recovered, he's essentially normal and goes on like normal life. As the animal wakes up, there'll probably be a noticeable effect as far as some lingering haziness or just a little dopiness, simply because of there's a tranquilization effect of that that lasts for a few minutes, even after they're awake and on their feet. And so what you would notice once the animal's back up is that he may act just a little fuzzy, not run as fast or be afraid of a, uh, what would be a perceived predator but that is a short term for about 30 minute effect and so you'll see that he, he gets up but then he's going to stay mildly tranquilized for just a while. We do that for safety as far as animal handling and for the human handlers that are going to be there with him so that he doesn't fight um, while we're handling and, and doing our procedures as far as blood collections and vaccinations and just monitoring his health. You may notice that when he wakes up his tongue will hang out for a little while and that's not a frequent occurrence. Um, it happens simply because of the tranquilization effect of the, the drug that he's had. That usually lasts about 10 minutes, um, sometimes not at all. When we're using tranquilizer darts, we need to know the range of the animal for a couple of reasons. One, the dart is a slow moving beast. It, it goes out there sort of like you would throw a rock. And so it's important that we know how the dart's gonna perform, but also where we place the dart in the animal. We wanna put it where it won't hurt the animal when it hits them and it's put into a muscle so that the tranquilization takes effect quickly. 
My preference where we hit the animal with the tranquilizer dart is usually in one of the large muscles, um, the side of their neck, their shoulder, or their hand muscle, simply because that's a safe place that doesn't have any vital features that the dart may harm, but also it's directly into the muscles so that the tranquilization will take effect quickly. The tranquilizer dart itself is a disposable unit that is a hollow tube, a cylinder, that is, has a needle on one end and it has an explosive charge in the tail of the dart that pushes the plunger much like a syringe. The way we load that is with, we, we use a needle and syringe to take the tranquilization medicine and put it through the needle of the dart that fills that cylinder with medicine, just like a full syringe. And then when the, the dart hits the animal, the, the collar of the dart striking the animal detonates the charge in the tail of the dart. That medicine is then pushed forward by that charge into the animal, and it happens instantly. And so there is minimal uh, bruising of the animal. Of course, it's just like if you were struck with a small rock. There's a small bruise at the side of the dart. The tranquilizer gun itself is equipped with a pressure reducing valve so that you can quickly adjust according to the range of the animal. Uh, the gun itself uses a 22 caliber blank charge that is your propulsive medicine. It just uses, then it's propulsed with the, propulses with gas. The, the dart is propulsed with the gas that leaves the gun. So if the animal's at range that you need to change, you can quickly, by a simple changing of the, the valve on the gun, adjust your range so that the dart travels an accurate distance and an accurate trajectory. The conditions at which we darted this animal today were perfect. The ambient temperature was around 40, 50 degrees. The most important thing we worry about is if it's too hot. The hyperthermia of the animal running from the, the handlers or the, the hunter uh, can endanger the animal, but so we consider that. We usually cut off, if it's above 80 degrees, we don't do any tranquilization at all. Once the animal is on the ground, we're concerned with, of course, it's vital as far as its ability to breathe. We keep its airway clean. If it's in the sun and it's a hot day, we want to certainly put him in the shade if that's possible. Uh, it, we're, we're concerned about his ability to cool himself and his breathing ability. And again, we're trying to monitor that the whole time that we're handling while he's down until he's recovered. While the animal's down, we take their heart rate, and their, we watch their respiration rate and quality of respiration, and we take their rectal temperature just to see what their core body temperature is. This is a vaccine. This is for anthrax, which is a naturally occurring disease out here in this part of the country. And we like to protect these animals. This is a herd bull. One of the several herd bulls, but we want to make sure he stays healthy and alive. It doesn't happen very much, but it's easily preventable with the vaccine. So that's why he's had that. If they, by some chance, have exceeded a normal body temperature, we have to cool them down. And we'll do that either with a cool water bath or even a cool water enema if they've gotten really hot. In this case today, this animal's temperature was normal, so we didn't have to do any of those procedures. Prior to reversing the tranquilization of the animal, we try to put them in a position where it's going to be easy for them to rise and continue to breathe easy while no one's handling them. That usually means we put them in a sternal position with their legs folded so that when they raise their head up, they can look around and easily go to their feet. We just stay quiet. When he gets up and he starts to move away, just don't get in front of him. So at the end of the hunt, you're holding your animal and it's breathing. You can see its eyes, you can feel the heartbeat. And you're thinking to yourself, you know, this guy's still alive, but yet you're taking your pictures and uh, he goes on to, to live another day. It was amazing. If you have any questions or comments about this video, make sure and log them below. If you liked it, I'm glad. I liked it too. I'd like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching.